I want to mention that in what I've learned about you, you have an incredibly low rate of autism in your practice where you're treating pregnant moms and dads. And so I'd really like to hear from you what you consider to be some of the key elements for your success. And maybe if you could even just share the rates of autism in your practice, because it's really quite phenomenal. Yeah. So. Um Here's the thing, if you want to have low rates of autism in your practice, do not write a paper <laughs> saying that you have low rates, because I have right? to give the disclaimer that literally when my paper was in press, I got my first new child with autism in 12 years. Wow, but still, so, one autistic yeah. child in 12 years of practice. So yeah. you have a busy practice. So I do a have lot a busy parents. practice. I, my p-value for my results is that there are 14 chances out of 1,000 that it was by chance. So I do think that some of the things we do have made a difference. One of the things about my practice is that I have um, siblings of children with autism. And so they have a higher ri risk for autism. Mm -hmm. uh, the risk is actually about 26% for a boy if you have an older sib with autism and about 9% for a girl. Mm -hmm. And I had six girls and six boys, none of whom got autism, but my numbers were so small that I want to make clear is not statistically significant. Okay. But I looked at almost 300 kids and I had a couple hundred more that did not develop autism.